Hey guys, this is the second in the uh, series with Alec Barr from Australia. Good day, mate. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Alex playing around at eight PR. He advanced. He wants to get down to six, five or six expert level. He's played a hundred games against XG money games. Sent me the file, and we're sort of going through them. The last session we looked at some mainly uh, cube action, and today. If I change the settings, um, we're going to look through checker play blunders from about 50 games. We'll see see how we go for time and what comes up and just chat about them and what you were thinking and if you think about them any differently now. Is that cool? Yeah, sounds great. All right, let's dive in. <clears throat> so you are, can you see the screen? You're, you're white, home ball, yeah, bottom right? Yeah, see. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see this here. So um, this is, uh, yeah, this is okay. This is a good one to start on because this is exactly the kind of um, mistake I could make again with that five one. My my kind of uh, logic here was that you know it's really efficient to use a one to build the board. I've got to, I've got to build my board out at some point um, because he's almost achieved full freedom um and you know my my with this pip deficit my game plan is to wait and hit a shot so why not use this to bring more checkers into the zone to use as ammunition to use as builders to make my board i didn't think um making the anchor especially especially the 23 point anchor was was that valuable here yeah um, it's amazing. I I undervalued the twenty. Obviously, I got to get the shameless plug in for the uh, the good old genius <laughs> book. But there's a couple of positions in there where Wilcox especially got it right because the 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 twenty three point the two point anchor has so much equity for the whole game, and and I would be scared of making it um, in positions like this because I feel like I'm priming myself to some extent. I think the, what's interesting here actually is if you you look on the top left, if we the next roll after the way you played it, it's a pass. See, by point oh two six. So your play actually was the difference between taking and passing uh, correctly, right? Because it wouldn't be a blunder. Mm -hmm. Whatever you played, if it was a pass next go, it wouldn't be an error. You know, no difference in equity because he's going to cube you out. So I guess yeah. the thinking is. Um, I mean, what, what, what does an anchor do? It protects you against the, the two offensive game plans of blitzing and priming. Yeah. Well, the, the priming, if you're on the edge, but here it doesn't really help. In fact, it primes you even more. But you stop being attacked with the blitz. So I guess already is it about, the gammons go does down. Does it matter? When you, didn't, oh, yeah. when you make the, the 23, you're losing 14% gammons. When you don't make it, you're losing 20. So extra 6% gammons, it's quite a lot. You know, the, the difference in wins is is less than 1%. So it's quite close. Mm -hmm. Like DMP, um, your player's right. Wins more games. Yeah, you okay. see that? Yeah, I was yeah. wondering if it had anything to do with the fact that his 8-point was stripped. Because I know that if you make the 23 and you have a stripped 8-point and you know, he wants to use those checkers on the eight to make inner board points. You put pressure on the on the eight yeah. when he you know, when he leaves it. But um, but it seems. But you're already, you've already you've already you already got pressure on him with if he makes it yeah. with a three one. You've you're already split with the, the on the twenty three. But yeah, I mean, look, it's it's not easy to find to make the deuce point here. I mean, honestly, over the board, I may well have played twenty three twenty two, which is it's not a blunder like yours, but it, it's an error. Mm just to try and give myself some light. But I guess the point is you're you're in a losing game. You're stuck so much in the race. You just take that equity of the deuce point. You know, you win about 16, 17% of games from just having the deuce point. Like, say he reaches yeah. a bear-off position. You know, you've always got that 16, 17% games locked in. Um, so I guess that's why. Sorry, I've skipped forward 50 games for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That was a pretty quick analysis. No more blunders. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's look on the next one. Um, yeah, this was close. Uh, so I just want to change it to checker play because we've looked at quite a few cubes. <clears throat> Okay, 2-1 here. 2-1, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so this was... Um, I think it's quite helpful to sort of talk through what my logic was at the time. It was, he's got one checker back, uh, and I'm behind in the race. My main goal would be preventing him from escaping fully and getting into a... a more defined state i suppose that yeah. was what i was thinking prevent the last checker escaping and i didn't and i and the correct play of 23 20 it's obviously you know the golden point anchor is great but it didn't seem when i had when i had you know i have an equally strong board or even i could be a slightly stronger board um he's got few men in the zone it didn't seem like the 20 point anchor was mm. the most important thing in that position mm. like it, it would say there was a checker on the 14 sorry on his um 11 point i'd make that i'd make the 20 in a heartbeat yeah but it didn't seem like the pressure on that checker was justified mm. felt like the focus was elsewhere so this one i do sort of struggle to see yeah um i think it's just a question yeah. of uh, uh first of all I mean, to me, when I when I look at this position, I would instantly make the twenty. I wouldn't even look at another play. Like it just screams out when you got four men back and two on the the twenty three and one on the twenty four that you're almost going to be in a back game if you don't make that anchor. Whereas if you make the twenty, you're in that game forever. You know. Uh, whereas, but thirteen ten was Pickham uh, hitting on the ten point was Pickham with the best play. So, you know, that's not easy to find. Um, I guess like some games where you're just losing by so much, whatever you do, uh, you know, it's just this preserving equity idea. I guess the game plan is just a bit big. If you hit, mm. he's got to not hit back and then you've got to cover and then you've still got four men to bring around. Um, but I think that this one will just come the more you play you know you'll just value that the golden point like two having both five points is you know obviously very strong uh, do you think do you think it would be closer if say his block was on my four point as in i'd be hitting off a more valuable point or do you think it's it's that kind of irrelevant it's more about you know with four men back making the 20 is just keeping my, me in the game forever Yeah, I think it's more of the latter. I mean, the, the other reason why it's quite nice to make your play, you know, it seems like the duplication of the threes, right? He needs three to hit you on the, yeah. the 22 and the, the five. So, whereas if you if he was on your four point, you give him good fours as well. So it's like, I can't really explain why, why it's right. I guess you're just losing the game so much, whatever you do, the... The upside's not big enough from the hit. You just kind mm. of, you've only got a two-point board, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is like a compounding yeah. mistake, isn't it? Yeah. In that same move. Yeah. So I, I'm there thinking that you know, now I've hit off. This is actually quite instructive, isn't it? Because it shows the follow-up from my play is that okay? So I, I have to then. I'm then thinking that I have to cover the three, which is not a point that I particularly want. You know, it's not the purest point, is it, when I'm losing losing the race. Now the pressure is noticeably on on the other side of the board because he's brought another builder into play. Um, and I guess that what the, the value, you just look at the absolute values of the points, right? The, the 20 point is worth way more than, a, than the three point when I haven't made the rack yet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think the yeah, other thing is sense. if you don't if you don't make the twenty, you can just lose the game so quickly. You know, I mean, if you cut, you make your play. I mean, it's much worse this time than the last time. You know, this is almost mm. 
quarter of a point you're giving away. Like, if he rolls 4-1, 4-3, 3-1, or double four, it's just game over when you've got four men back behind the, you know, the, the, the four, five, six, and eight point. You know, you lose so quickly. Mm. Whereas you look at that 20 point, you get hit on your three point, it doesn't matter that much. You can come back and make another anchor. He's going to be miles away from even cubing, yet alone winning the game. I think that's yeah. the key. It just keeps, yeah. it's just patience, you know, it just keeps you in it. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this is, um, can you see it now? Yeah, so it, I've just, yeah. Why destroy my? Well, actually, what did I do? I made the three points, which felt like okay. So this felt felt like I was uh, rolling my prime forward with the remaining spares. Admittedly, not like right at the edge, but. Um, you know, it felt like I make I make that point, and then I fill in the four, and I slowly roll the prime forward. But I think what uh, the prime is doing. I think what you're missing is the job the, where it is, right? I think what you're missing is the three point isn't part of the prime. So if you make the four point, you've got a six point prime. The three point is not going to help you. But does it not help me when I roll? It helps me when I then fill in the four afterwards, doesn't it? Well, if you make the four, say if you, I mean, if you happen to roll a three two, you made the six prime. It doesn't matter. The, 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 the three point won't help you, right? You'll have a six prime. If you roll a three two now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, when you're bringing that other build around now with the right play, eighteen eleven, you're going to have three builders to make it naturally. So the three point won't help. It doesn't block him from coming out either. So I think, and the other thing is, it, it's quite bad because it takes away spares. Say you make the three point and he misses you on the 18, but say he rolls a three now and he steps up. Yeah. You haven't got anything to attack him with except the, the seven, eight, nine, which is stripped. And you're going to be forced, but unless you roll a perfecto, you're going to be forced to hit him loose. So you'll take away your builders to make a point which isn't that important. You know the the four point is just the yeah, and the other thing yeah, the, the other sense. the other thing staying back on the eighteen is you leave him. I know we said not to count shots, but not only do you leave him ones like when you come to the eleven, but you give him a good three five and six two. You know, yeah. with John particularly, yeah, yeah, even without counting shots, it's obviously extra more. shots. So is, yeah. is, is the prime? Is this about okay? So I'm bringing game plan wise. I do want to. I do want to roll my prime forward. It's just I want to do it. You've got to do it in, in order. Way when when you got a order, five prime, yeah, you've got to do it in order. It's like it's yeah. so so hard for me to explain this one because it's just like it doesn't occur to me to to burn checkers past the the point you want to mm. make. It's like you nearly always you want the purity and priming games of making the points in order, unless you're turning it into a blitz, or you've got like a really awkward number then you make the next point. But, you know, you really want to make your points in order when you've got a prime rolling it forward. Yeah. It's like often right The prime's to... kind of doing its, its job where it is, right? Like yeah. It's actually, for the, t- for the time being, I don't want to do anything that's going to make that more brittle. Yeah, I think it weakens your position actually having the three point here. Because yeah. it doesn't really block anything except for 2-1 coming to the edge of the prime maybe. It doesn't do anything. You know, you're not trying to... Yeah, you've only got a two-point board. You're not trying to blitz him and crush him. You're just trying to make that... And the other thing is you can make the back of the prime. Like when you play... If you envisage a situation where you come to the 11 and he misses you, just plays that check around with a 10, and you roll something like a 5-6 a, a and you spring those back checkers, mm. now you can target the 10-point for your 6 prime as well. You know, yeah. so, so it's like a two-way thing. It's just, yeah, it's, it's moving Yeah, on. that one makes sense. 
two five. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, what did I do? I, I didn't. I didn't hit, did I? Yeah. So this is me trying to uh, think. Think in terms of uh, this sort of topsy turvy way of thinking about a bat game and not hit, but getting that idea wrong. Yeah. So I was like, I'm. I don't want to. If I if I hit, I've got um, I've got no board. And um, I'm just going to damage my own, like, I'm in a one-two bat game. So what do I need Mi minimum, like, 100 pips, you know, to be, to yeah. be reasonable? I've never, I've never worked so, it out by pips how many you need for the timing. I just kind of feel it. But, yeah, I mean, you haven't got great timing here for a one-two. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and you I can see... Got great timings. You can see after so your play you lose, um, you're losing 36% gammons, right, without hitting. Mm. With it, I mean that's a hell of a lot you know it's super high yeah. <laughs> uh, when you get up to that range so basically anything's better so just anything's better than settling, in, settling for a back game which is shitty you know even though you've got no points in board you may not win it coming forward straight away but you might make a better anchor on the three or four like you just really don't want to see, you've, you started playing that gammon right so you'll, yeah. you'll see you just want to spread the checkers and like make higher anchors and, 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 and be flexible. You don't want to uh, settle into bad back games. Uh, I might, um, this might be quite a good one to play out, actually. Mm. As in, you know, let play against XG a few times. I'm going to just make a note of that now. Because I, I think, yeah, my logic was if I, it's, I'm in a one-two back game. I don't like being in that. I've got bad timing. Therefore, I don't want to hit because I don't want to, uh, it was going to hurt my timing even more. But I guess what you're saying is, well, first of all, okay, hitting hitting makes my back game, my one-two back game suffer, but I don't want to be in a one-two back game in the first place. So don't, you know, yeah. you're still trying to play forward. I, I get that there's no, like, immediate parlay. There's no, like, amazing uh, offensive yeah. maneuver I can make straight away. But anything is better than resigning to a one-two back game with poor timing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You play that one out. Yeah. Um. Huh. So now we have um, a similar idea. That's right? why backgammon well, is a difficult I, game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, I wish it was all just simple rules, right? No, not yeah. at all. Okay. So then here I'm doing. I'm thinking the exact inverse of the previous position where, okay, I've, well, there's two things going on here. First of all, I have to hit and I have to, I have to hit to come to the edge of the prime. It seemed re really natural to, to hit off the 22, not necessarily because hitting off the 22 is good, but because I want to come to the edge of the prime. So that felt, that felt reasonable. And then the, the, the three was then the least, the least shots, I suppose. But, um, yeah, it, it looks like I mean, just going looking at the XG, like various top plays, this is suddenly everything's become a lot sc scarier, right? I don't have. He's he's got almost uh, he's got three point four. Yeah, you can't you can't win this coming you block. can't win this coming forward anymore, and you're giving mm. up. You're giving up your second anchor now when he's got a strong board and he's, he's he'll blitz you. That's the problem now. Before, um, you know, he's only got a two-point board and you didn't have all those blots lying around in board after the hit. Um, but now, you know, after your play, mm. you know, you may never I've make... I've got loads of tight gammons in this position, right, surely? Yeah, 42%. 42%, yeah. I mean, you're losing a lot anyway, 36, but 40... Yeah, I mean, you just... You just get blitzed out of the water, I guess. Um... Or one, hmm. uh, yeah. So another another coming to the edge of the prime mistake. Why? I mean, look. It's, I know I'm not getting out. It's a six prime. Um, but why not come to the edge? I think it's difficult. I think part of it is to do with the four. Like you, you'd rather slot the three point than the two point. You know. 
playing mm-hmm. playing the whole role. It's a bit like we said before, you know, you want to make your points in order. But maybe maybe he just can can attack you there with a six prime and it's a, it's a difficult one when to come up or not, to be honest. It's quite tricky. I don't Yeah, I, suppose, I think I guess I think I just naturally would have played eight three without thinking, but because I don't really see the gain of coming to the twenty three. Like he's gonna what does it gain? Like he he's gonna bring his builders down and then point on you in order. Mm. Um I guess yeah, that's a good point. Like he he wants to hit he wants to roll this prime forward hitting me off the edge of it. So by stepping up, I give him the ability to roll forward and hit me at the same time. Whereas if he if he throws something awkward where he has to hit, he doesn't particularly want to be hitting you know, the last spare, hitting off the his ace point. He'd rather be making the deuce, surely. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking it's easy to draw conclusions, you know, because of, often it is right to come up. Mm. Um, it just depends. I mean, I was going to open up another XG, but it, hold on, let me let me just do it. Just give me one sec. Yeah, sure. I know you can't see this shared screen. Can can you see this new screen? No, no, I can't see it. But I think okay, but I'll just tell you. I'll just give. Hold on, one sec. So. I'm just looking, say you had a made board uh, and you had an ace, an ace to play. Um, now it's closer to whether to step up or not. Um, I've just got to shut it down because... Look, don't kill yourself, don't kill yourself, kill yourself over this one. But it's just to do with timing and, and where he wants to hit you, I think. Um... Five three. Yeah. Okay. I think this this seems like an oversight. Like, why would I be running when I'm behind in the race and leaving the anchor? Yeah. That seems, no, yeah. 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 No game. That seems no easy. Game. You either get hit or yeah. or lose the race. Yeah. I think actually, if we, just if we go back to that one. Yeah. I just want to see what what I was maybe thinking. Was I trying? I probably didn't want to break my board. Is that what it came down yeah, to? Yeah, it was probably like, that. And you were probably thinking like he could roll a 2-1 or something and leave you a shot or, you know, 3-1 even. Or 3-1 picks and passes. But, you know... Um, yeah, I just get, I just lose too much. It make, it, I see it, yeah. It makes sense. Well, as it happens, you win... Your play <clears throat> wins as many games. Both 11.6% wins. Your but play... loses 10% more gammas. Yeah. Yeah. So DMP, it's pick them. Mm. You know, because when you when you come out, like once you've broken the board, you haven't got much timing for um, your, your shots aren't going to win anyway, right? You haven't got much timing for a, a deuce point game. Yeah. By staying back. Yeah, yeah. So your your play does create some hope, like you know, just create some kind of uh, I call it Fowler, like that. Israeli TV series like you've got to make something happen in a oh like a, a situa- like an action play yeah like a situation you know it's like boiling boiling yeah. up you've got to create some fowder in this position like I can see <laughs> I can see why you um, why you do it but it's it's deceptive it's the gammons you know you can e- easily analyze mm. this and just say oh I'm down in the race what's the point of running so, but it's not that so I think I have a t- I think I have a tendency to I'm, I'm noticing it even just now, but I've noticed it before. Um, I can find a DMP play. You know, when I'm, I'm when I'm making a mistake, it, a lot of the time it's because it's losing so many gambons. Yeah. So I'm making. I can find plays that are winning the most games, but not taking into account just the significance of the gambons against me, mm. which I know I do. Because you haven't played for money, have you? 
very much. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're like me and yeah. you start playing for money when you're, when you're a kid or uh, get into backgammon, I've always played for money. It's damn painful yeah. when you get gammon, you know? Yeah. You have to pay double. <laughs> you learn pretty quick to like be scared. Yeah, that's good. Maybe not, I should start staking something on my games. Not, not just uh, <laughs> like matches or, you know, it doesn't hurt the same way. Like when you play yeah. for cash and you get gammon, it's four points, it's a lot, you know, or eight, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Mm. Not that you should play backgammon in fear. You know, gammon is part of the game. If you don't, if you don't ever get gammon, you're not playing aggressively enough. Mm. Um... Yeah, so what's happened here? Uh, yeah, this feels... Okay, so I'm just... Okay, basically, basically you just got to say, you got to say, I've lost this game. Yeah. yeah? And and um, just not get hit, not, you know, to send another one back. That's it. You don't, you don't want to leave a direct shot. Is there... With this one, yeah. is... Um, so I get, I get how my players just basically left... Um, yeah, it's left. Uh, I, I'm losing the game anyway, and you know, a, a six, a direct hit is really bad to leave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is there a component of this that is about not leaving the midpoint when you have checkers back, or is it more about just protecting myself against shots? Because sometimes I leave the mid too early um, when I've got checkers back, and I'll try and see it as the bridge, you know, the connection point between. Yeah, but there's no bridge here. Look, you're 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 fucked. How are you, <laughs> how are you, there's no bridge. I mean, the only way you get out is double one, double six. You know? Yeah. There's no bridge there's here. No bridge. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bridge to, yeah. Bridge to nowhere. Um, yeah. Good point. Well made. So I think it's just, um, yeah, you just, I mean, I guess it's like, yeah, actually all your errors so far, this thing have been a theme, haven't they? Like not making the deuce point earlier, running off, the deuce there, the back game kind of decisions when you when you did it the second time, not the first, and now this. You're just not respectful of gammons, I guess. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's it. So maybe, you know, if you were in a match and your your opponent's four away, you you would be, right? You'd probably be paying out yes. a yes, lot of it, special, yeah. special attention. So I yeah. guess maybe just... Zero zero to eleven or money games. You just got to think about it a little bit more. Mm. Um, I've actually, so I'll send it to you. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I had that idea uh, to write this book called Thinking in Equity, which actually, I'm yeah, actually thinking like a machine. I was going to call it. I changed the name. I haven't got around to it because I got sidetracked with this genius one. But I basically, I've written a chapter. It's on the side. Oh, no, I've forgotten about it for now, but I wrote a chapter just playing around with gammons. And I've mm. got like 50 reference positions for gammons. So you look at the positions and you estimate gammons in all sorts of situations. Um, and I'll send it to you because I think it would be useful. Because yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. One, once, you, once, you, once you know like the end game scenario, so say like... Um, if you're stuck with two on the ace point and he's bearing off and all your other men are on your one, two, three, how many gammons do you lose? With like, say we go back to that last position. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, where has it gone? Yeah. So say, say for example, this position, um, you... Um, just seeing if I've got that open, that thing, and I don't, otherwise I'd have shown you now. Say you don't leave the shot, and you bring all your checkers around, and he just bears in, and he ends up in this situation where he's bearing off against your crushed game. You've got no board left, right? Because yeah. you haven't got timing, yeah. but you've got two stuck back on his ace. How many gammons, yeah. how many gammons do you lose there? I think, depending on, I think I'd know that one as a reference position. It's, it's about 15, close to 15. Yeah. And then if you add a checker on, so say you get hit with this 35. checker. 35. Yeah, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, do, I know that's yeah. a different position, yeah. So each checker yeah. on is another 20% roughly. Another 20, yeah. It's yeah. quite shocking. So every time you get hit, it's another 20% G's against, basically. 
So it's just when you think of it like that, the upside of it. That's good, actually, because I hadn't forecast, basically, yeah, looking at what, like, I know the reference position, and I know the, I can qu quantify the number of additional checkers, but here we're like 10 stages before that happens, and I'm not, I'm not seeing it as resulting in the reference position that I know. Yeah, but it's actually really obvious when you leave a shot. Yeah, I and mean, I'm just thinking like it's a miracle. You know, to me, like I'm not tunneling out of that, and I haven't really. Occasionally, like occasionally, I can counter prime him, and something bad could happen, or you can roll double one. But basically, I've just resigned myself to the fact that I'm going to be in an ace point game here. I just don't really have the timing to to prime him. So I, I see that straight away. Like the, like the end game, what what it boils down to, and then I say I just don't don't want a, another man back. Mm. So yeah, I guess it's just looking if you, the more you play, uh, the further the further ahead you'll look. So this is good because I would definitely make this mistake again. Um, obviously, the hit's mandatory, and the reason why I didn't hide the blot on the eight was because. He has six checkers off. He has two blots in board. And as far as I was concerned, if I got hit, you know, if I get hit back from the bar, then I have another chance to pick up more checkers, which will help me win the game. So I, you know, didn't, I, it's funny, I didn't expect this to be that big a blunder. I was like, I, I have the opportunity to pick up more checkers. If I don't, fine, maybe I can hit, maybe he comes in and he doesn't hit me with a fly shot from the bar and I can hit him again from the eight point. Um, so yeah, but but I lose five percent, close to five percent more games by leaving that outfield hit. Um, I think you're, you're, I think you're, think, I you're thinking about that. it in terms of you getting hit, but I'd be thinking more about this. Like, um, unless I pick up that second checker, I'm going to find it very hard to win this game. And if I play 1918, 1813, it's very hard for me to ever pick up the second checker because. He either enters in and runs uh, a man off his mid, or if yeah. he fans, I've only got 11 shots to hit him as opposed to 17. 17, yeah. So oh, okay, cool. I think you want to hang yeah. back uh, mainly to, to try and pick up the second checker because when he's got um, six men off and your board's busted, you, know, you, you, need, you, know, you need to pick that checker up, really. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good. I was so my my thinking about picking up the second checker was right. It's just my means were wrong. I actually reduced the number of shots at the checker on. Yeah. On his thirteen point. Yeah. Okay. Makes yeah, I sense. think I think that's it. I think that's it. Um. Okay. This. Double fives to race or to blitz. This is the one that I seem to get get this wrong so frequently. Yeah. Um, so the, there's always two things going through my head that's conflicting, which is so I'm 21 pips ahead. What I want to do is bring this game home quietly. The way to do that is to race. You know, play play safe. Don't leave shots. Don't do anything that's going to jeopardize my. Uh, advantage in the race and bring checkers around and a, fi a double five is a nice way to do that however bearing in against an anchor on the five with a goalkeeper is painful surely i want to push him off the, my ace and push him forward so that i don't have to deal with the the blot on my yeah, ace yeah i get it i get it i get it And this is, yeah, this is a common, I mean, look, that does look, that, I suppose the resulting position just does look better with 14. No, just see it. I mean, I guess this leaves you so many strip points that even when he comes in, I mean, it's quite interesting what happened. Mm -hmm. you, made, you made this play and then he fanned, right? And then yeah. it's still a take. Very skinny. Yeah. It's close take for yeah. him. You did double it. You found the double. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good at least. So, um, <laughs> so the thing is, he's down forty pips. He's on the bar, but he still has a, a take, right? I guess just because you're so stripped yeah. and you've got four points to clear 
with no flexibility and he doesn't lose many gamuts um, mm. you know when he's got that five point anchor so yeah I guess it's just the the purity of this um, I'm not saying I would I mean my first instinct would have been to point on the ace and find two other fives as well to, to, to get him deeper but when I look at this it just looks so stripped and I know I'm going to be leaving shots yeah. later whereas here I feel like I've got hardly anything bad if, if any, anything is there a bad number don't see it um, nothing bad and yeah. you're going to bring that checker from the 13 it's like visualizing what's going to happen you a you're a strong cue whatever he rolls and you're going to bring this checker in and then you're going to be able to turn it into a blitz against the ace point later or prime it gives you the flexibility of both ways yeah that's true With no bad numbers it's just i think it's just seeing it you know this just i think you just play enough and you're it does look yeah. In fact, you know what? I think Ford does look nicer. Do you fiddle around with the checkers much when you play? Do you have a look at plays before you play them? Yeah, I, I actually, I actually, um, I do. Um, but and it feels like you know, had I done that here, I honestly can't remember playing this exact position, so I can't remember if I did mm. it here. But it feels like I should have arrived at that um, conclusion naturally i think the thing that deceived me a little bit was um if you look at the other play or the one i made um 14 9 is that not only do i push him off the ace i also give myself an additional landing spot so my on the nine so i was thinking okay you know it's it's flat and it's stripped but i have more yeah. spaces to bring my 13 down yeah. to which that will then use for builders so that kind of was a bit of an illusion no, that's not an illusion. It's true. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't normally recommend it because I think it can be distracting. You want to be able to visualize the whole thing. But I think with you, you miss a lot of pure plays. Mm. And I think there's no harm sometimes in having a look at the plays. Take the checkers back and just go with what feels best sometimes. I know that's not very scientific and you should be able to... No, but it's, reason but it's out kind of like but, what... Um, as Ziska says in his book, I guess, which is, you know, I can from the the story. If I play out the story from the from the strip position, it's quite hard to play out a story that doesn't involve you. Like, like what am I going to do? I'm going to have to clear some of those points in order to generate spares to bring the game forward. Yeah. So they're only so they're only going to be they're, they're only lasting for one roll at most anyway. Whereas you know two spares on the on the six, which is you know the correct play, there's a lot more. Uh, the, the story is easier to see playing out. Like it might it might be a little bit awkward, but it's still um, not as immediately sort of uh, fragile as the other position. So I, I get that the, the intuitive ugliness of the play. This is a horrible one. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Just spread your legs to be gangbang what you did. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give him everything. Yeah. And the upside of the, the having the deuce point instead of the ace isn't that huge, right? I mean, obviously it's nicer to have the, the, the deuce point anchor than the ace, but... Um, yeah, just the... There's not enough upside compared to the risk. To let him hit, yeah. It's, yeah. it's way too many shots. And the gammons again. It's like you know. It's like you're playing DMP all the time. You know, you, you, mm. you give away an extra six percent gammons. Anyway, I'm sure you can see that one now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so what did I do? I split, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. So I, I split thinking that, well, kind of thinking that uh, that, that would be. Mandatory. I've got to tell you, by the way, I've got to tell you, by the way, I don't think I would have got this right. I don't think I would have got okay. this right. Um... So the, the six, six to one feels odd because I can, I can see six to one when you, when he's got a bunch of builders, poised to make you know it's when it's a tempo 
basically. But it doesn't seem... I suppose it does have a lot of builders. Oh, the 6 to 1 seems automatic the... to me because you just got to take away the tempo. You know, you're losing by 22 pips and, and uh, he's about to make a prime with everything or escape. You, you've got to do something. You have to. But I would have split with the 2, I think, because I, I thought the 13-11 doesn't give you enough. But I guess when he's winning the race by like... so much, you don't want to... You don't want to fight for an anchor or double hit in this position. It, ma it makes sense now that I see it. Maybe so I... is this? He's also got 12. 12 Actually, I would have found it because you know why. Position. You know, like he's rolled a double six the roll before, yeah? Yeah. So it's a bit like, you know, when he rolls double five early. I'm sure you know this. When the opponent rolls double five and he's really fast and stacky, you don't split. Yeah, you don't split, yeah. Yeah, this is the same. Like he's rolled double mm. six... Um, you know the hit with a five is clear you don't split um, because he's ahead in the race and he can attack you with those men then he's, it's hard for him to prime when he's in the air so it does make sense so the not splitting makes sense because yeah stacky 12, 12 in the zone yeah um, dangerous for the, for the same reasons you just said yeah I still I still Six to one. So okay, if you look at it from a game plan point of view, he's blitzing, I'm priming, surely. So six to one seems sort of counter to the game plan that I want to win by. Like I'm losing the race. I've got points. I've got, I've got um, the four point made. I've got builders in a smooth distribution. You know, let let me ask fields, you, you, know. you make this play, yeah? Yeah. How are you going to prime next go? He's either going to roll... A double to like a double three, double four, double five, double six to wipe you out, or he can hit you with six two, six three, um, four five, or he, you know, you're giving him two one, three two, two one. All his numbers just play everything, plays well, or he can attack you and hit loose. It's very unlikely. I mean, the best case view is he rolls like a, I don't know, four two makes the four point. And then you make the five point. And even then, mm. you don't really want to get in a prime. specific you, things. You don't really want to get in a priming game when you've got two men back and he's got one. Uh, sorry, when you've got two men back and he's only got one back, you're, you're usually going to come a cropper in a priming game. Because, you know, you're going to have that? two. Well, just you, you're going to have two men to escape and he's only got one. Like if you get into prime versus oh, okay. prime. This yeah? is the kind of pr a prime and anchor attack a block type thinking. Yeah, so it's just like, uh, I think it's it's just the tempo play, really. And the thing is, it's not, although you don't want to burn a checker to the ace, look how his numbers play. Like if he, say he, say he enters just with like a, I don't know, three, two or something. Five, one? Yeah. yeah. Then you can make the prime. You're not take. You're actually not taking a spare. Like you're taking a spare away, but you still got another builder on the six. So obviously you don't want to put a check on the ace. Yeah. Um, in a in a situation where you're trying to build a prime, but it's not stopping well, you from, from priming later. I suppose also he um, he fan he dances with four numbers. I've got a stronger board. My board is twice as strong yeah. as his. And he's got one man back. So if you were to just go like safe bold criteria, for example, and you know, I've got a, I've got a stronger board, I'm behind in the race, I've got more men back, I'm trying to stop the last back checker from getting out, and it's a tempo, and he can fan with four numbers, there's a hell of a lot in in favor of hitting. Yeah. Sorry, I've just been yeah, literally okay. one second. The the Ocado delivery man's at my door. Just give him one sec. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries. Well, whilst I'm gone, although I said to you not to do it, just play through all the numbers for him in your head. All of them, very quickly. Have a look how they play with when you don't hit. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Uh, what else have we got here? So we hit on the aces on the bar. Comes out with, uh, okay, double six and double four. Six four are bad, obviously. Um, Double five is pretty big swing. 
Um, yeah, double three, even double two and double uh, double one is pretty good actually. Um, what about six one from the bar? Yeah, even six six one is pretty awkward. Two five and three four, they all get pretty dangerous. So I can prime him next time. Uh, yeah, so he's got nothing bad, right? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I was going through the numbers out loud to yeah. uh, keep the viewers. Oh interested. yeah. I mean, it just you can't give him freedom here. I guess it just develops too nicely. Yeah. It's just that. It's just that. You, it's, you, you got to do something, you know. Mm. So what's happened here? Double six. Double, yeah, double six. Um, what did I do? Oh, I broke the mid. Yeah, I guess your your play just doesn't achieve very much, and you lose all that outfield control. Like you know, th this isn't much worse than this forward wise, and you lost the that. Bridge. That's true, but I haven't lost the mid. That that was the bridge you were that talking about before. That yeah, that one that one actually makes sense. It's, yeah. it's I guess here, I think you need, here I'm, you I'm need a bridge. You need a bridge, and and not just a bridge, but the the presence to block block his mid and 15 point mm. the contact you know it makes his life very difficult having that midpoint I mean, how are you and gonna... why, why do you want to make his life difficult if you're ahead in the race that's that's probably my thinking it's you know I, I gain in the race so therefore it's okay to clear but the thing is you, you when you play one down from the mid and make the deuce and slot the three point you're not you're not wasting that much in the race, right? I mean, eventually you're going to have to have mm. some men on your deuce for three anyway. It's not like you've got loads of men there anyway. So the downside of the play is small. You waste. You can always clear the mid later, right? It's only, any combo of four, five, and six clears it. You're never going to have a problem clearing the mid in this position and burning checkers. Because um, you could... But... So you you actually build the board as well with with um, yeah with this true. play you know give him a threat like now he's got to play if he doesn't roll even numbers yeah uh, if he doesn't roll even numbers he's leaving you flies you've got another point in board you start building a three I only waste a tiny bit in the race putting those checkers there in fact you'll probably waste more by putting them all to the mid because now. When you say you roll a six and you don't come off the anchor, say you're gonna to have to burn it to the one or two now. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think to be honest, this is probably the worst of all the plays, <laughs> really, yeah. because it, it, it's like. Sorry, I don't want to pick on you, but this is like. No, 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 it's fine. It's um. so far off you get backgammon understanding yeah. or logic like to, to yeah I mean you see okay so the logic is your 12 pips up after the race he's on roll on a race of 150 yeah. pips it's virtually even like he, you know he's on roll so how are you going to get into a race from this position after your play like how are you going to get those men on the 23 mm -hmm. home unless you roll double five perfect doubles yeah yeah. You're giving him all yeah, the freedom to build points to build points in the outfield, build points in the infield, his bar, and you how are you gonna escape? Yeah, it seems quite obvious now. And the to retain the outfield presence, retain the bridge, also the you know, making a definite improvement to my board strength. Yeah. With yeah. Like it's sort of like in, in um in when you roll double sixes in the early game, usually, like at no point is fully clearing your midpoint the right use of. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's not the it's not the balanced play for a game that's in its early, yeah, in its early phases. Yeah, similar here. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um. Uh. What 
earlier six five no I made the board as opposed to stepping up. I'm not sure I would have found the double step up which is the right play. Um but yeah, I twenty three, twenty two, six four. I may have played seems more natural. Yeah. But I think you know, let's take a top down view. How would you before you roll, how would you describe mm. this game? Uh okay, so it's it's a kind of defined state. He's you've achieved full freedom. It's a whole it's a two point holding game. That's how I'd describe it. Um Although I suppose the race, what's unusual about that is that the race is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not behind in the race. Uh, how do I describe it? I mean, I think the thing is a, a two point holding game. First of all, two point is not a holding game. It's, it's just a two point game. You're not holding anything. You, mm. You're just fucked. Like your, your equity is bad <laughs> when you're in a two point game. You don't want to be in it. It's a pass, right? If it's just yeah. a pure two-point game, it's a pass. You know, the cube's in the middle now. So you don't, you can't, it's a bit like before, you can't settle for being in a back game when you can go forward. Like, you're nine pips up in the race, you've got to get moving. Like, you can't just stay there and die on the deuce point. Mm. He's going to make a point now whether he's got sixes, fours, ones and twos to make the... the his nine point or ones, threes, fives and sixes to make his five or fours and twos to make his four. He's got everything, right? There's no, all yeah. his numbers play. Everything's going to make a point. So you're getting, you, you're getting primed and you just got to say to yourself, he's only got a one point board now. I'm nine pips up in the race. I cannot stay back on that deuce point. I need to win this game by making a higher ankle or just running one checker and then escaping with the other or even picking up flies by being uh, split you know mm. more fly yeah, shots so when you split I can see yeah I would I think 6 to 4 23 22 taking that logic would be the play that I would have made I would have still tried to cover the the 4 as opposed to the double step up but I, guess like there's, there's, I mean, there's this actually would have been right? a brilliant position if I ever wrote the Genius Quiz 2. Not now, because people have seen it, but this would be a brilliant yeah. position for it because like the, the, I wonder how many of the top players would get this right. I think a lot of them. Because the logic's so, it's so instructive. It's like, it's t teaching you, your, your priority is to come home, not build the board. And that's what that's what that top player is showing you. I mean, twenty twenty two and six four is close, right? It's only a quarter a point oh two six to uh, step up and, and make the four. Um, but but this is really instructive because it's a bit like that one two back game before where you didn't come up the first time um, or hit. It was um, you can't. You can't sit back and die deep in your opponent's board. You know? Mm. So often it looks scary, but you've just got to split. So do you, do you still have the other XG window open? Yeah. Because if, if the... Um, oh, sorry, I don't. I don't. I'll tell you why. Because for some reason, when I have two of them, it's too much for my computer to handle it. It says... Um, oh, really? The reception value's uh, gone down or something on the recording. Uh, okay. I had to close. What it. I was going to say was, I was going, I was wondering whether or not if Black had the um, their five point. So, so at the moment, split. There's absolutely no risk, or there's limited risk to me splitting, because uh, I guess my my board is stronger as well. So mm. there's like, yeah, in that respect, contact favors me. If Black had their five point. Um, I'm curious to know whether the split would still even be even more, even more, correct, even more, because you're you're even more prime. It's like when he mm. makes the five uh, point. Yeah, if he makes the five point on the first roll of the game with a three-one, 
anytime you roll a two or a three and you can't make a point, you've got to step up, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's like you, 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 your equity from a two-point game is really bad, basically. So you need to just try and find something else and come forward. Mm. Um, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, similar to the to the one-two back game. The the value yeah. of stepping up is something that I'm probably un, under undervaluing in these against these priming positions. Yeah. So you found the third best play here. Yeah, this was because. So I guess typically when you hit on the when you've got a, when you hit on the ace and you've got a block, you you go back to the seventies and you would say you never cover it, and then now we know that you want to cover it generally quite quickly. So twenty four thirteen achieves full freedom, but leaves the block on the on the ace. I thought covering the block using that logic of once you've hit there, once you've started it, you need to finish making it, is a good use of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, is, is a good use of that. I suppose, yeah, I guess if the, if you run all the way and then you're missed on the, uh, on the ace, you've got a kind of defined state, fully free position, and you're, li- you're probably likely to be able to make the ace on the next turn um whereas if you make the ace if i make the ace now then and come forward well i give him great sixes from the bar for one thing um and i've still got one checker almost back yeah yeah is that probably the right way of looking at it yeah i just think your your position's so powerful when you run and and, and he misses like if he hits mm. you, it's bad. Obviously, if first of all with your play, I I told you not to do this. Sorry, but um, how many shots is it? Uh, so you, okay, you think so you to yourself, watch. oh, I don't want to leave a shot. I cover it, right? Like your play, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to this. So you got two. But how many shots is it? Okay, so let's look. So you got two six, three six, five six, two one. Three one, uh, double, uh, double three. Five double one, two. You, missed. you missed five one. Five one, yeah. Uh, so what's that? That's already fourteen shots. I think that's twelve um, plus double two, double three, double five, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen so, shots versus eleven. The yeah. Well, and, five, and six five. Oh, yeah, and double five, so 14. So okay. It's the same number of shots. Okay, so it, basically it's the same shots, right? So it's just the same number of shots, but you... It's just the yeah. Whereas this one... You, it's actually, yeah. So this reminds me of another bit in... Well, it's the same number of blots as well, right? This, this way, three blots. This way, three yeah. blots. So both three blots... But this has fewer shots, and it escapes the man all the way, and you're just super powerful. If he comes on a three, I mean, you're basically close to a cube already, mm. very close, because you know you're up thirty pips or whatever, and um, no bad numbers. Maybe you haven't quite got a cube if he anch- if he doesn't anchor you're a massive cube. So I think. Um, yeah, you can. Can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it now, and okay. I'm I'm thinking about that bit in Disco's book as well, where he says, you know, if you if you, in these positions, if you don't run that back checker, then next roll, there's a hundred percent chance of having at least one checker back. Mm. Whereas if you oh, do true. run it, you there's there may be a chance next roll that you have none. Yeah, of so that, you're on a free roll. You're on a free roll because you've got one back yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good. It's yeah, a exactly. clever way of saying it. Clever way to say, yeah. You just yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you must have just had an oversight. Oh, I just missed the double hit. Yeah, this is just oversight. Yeah, Yeah, missed it. Uh. Oh yeah, 
yeah okay so yeah okay this is interesting i i don't really i don't really see why it's so bad to run okay so i run into a direct shot that is bad i can see that i give him a good six but the the concept of running a you know that spare on the 24 is not doing anything helpful for me i don't it, you know i want to bring it forward um you know i wonder if rolling a, a five um, so what do you want to, what do you want to bring forward so 20 so i did, i played 24 15 right yeah. i i don't that the spare the 24 point block is i don't want so it made well either way uh, either way you're playing 24 20 right it's just a question of the five yeah so if play the, the you play the four yeah so you're moving that whatever you do and now you've got a five yeah, to play just don't run, okay so i just don't want to run into direct shots give them a good six it's not just that it's just it's just the um the difference between a two and a three point board here i know you're thinking it's only the deuce point and you've got the yeah. bar but it's like if he leaves a fly shot and you hit it your board now is swiss cheese you know he just comes in either hits you or, or um mm. just in and out you know but that that when you have the seven to two it's a real threat. He dances nine times instead of four. He can come in on the ace. He's primed. He comes in there. You can blitz him. Like it's, it's such a big difference between a two and a three point board. Two point board is basically nothing. Mm. So to me, like if you come to the twenty, he's going to be scared to hit you loose once you made that three point the, the three point board. Whereas you come out, you're just giving him sixteen sixteen directs. You're making all of his bad sixes good, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah, that's true. Whereas when, and you, when and you, you strengthen the board. When you come up to the 20, you know, his 3-1, double one, double three are good anyway. Do you see, do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... so. I guess you just get, you get a direct yeah. shot back when you, unless he rolls 3-1, double one or double three, when he hits you on the five point, you get a direct shot back, and you yeah, have a three shot. point board, as Against opposed to board. yeah, okay, low, you know, yeah, loads of sense. shots for free. Six two. Hmm. So you found the right six. Uh, no, uh, two six. It just makes the outside out of the fifteen. Yeah, I, I guess your play is just a little tiny bit stiff. Uh, was, you play this, yeah. I mean that. Yeah, it looked more. It looked more stiff. Twenty three fifteen. I remember looking at that and thinking, yeah, I've got too many, too many outfield points to clear. Yeah. I don't know. I guess. I guess you're just down in the race. You know, you want another point. You want contact. Mm. You know, it's different if you're up eleven. Maybe you don't want that yeah, point, but when you're fair. down. Just have the presence out there, you know. Uh, oh, it's on the final. It's on the final position. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, eight, eight to two. Felt weird. So what did I do? Twenty-one fifteen. So I let go of this. I just let go of the anchor, which is, which is where I'm getting all my contact from. Yeah, okay. Basically, for black, it's really re it's really difficult to bring things around safely. And by breaking, by leaving the 21, well, I give him a ton of shots for one thing. I give him a ton of shots and lose my second anchor in the home board. But yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Eight, eight to two, I wonder if I thought eight to two was you know, not pure enough, given yeah. Yeah, I get it. kind of... Uh, that game-ish position yeah. I've got, but yeah, maybe I thought I had enough contact from yeah, the just, 18. Just, and your the priority deuce. here is to make points in board, you know, whichever, the, obviously not the ace and you don't really want the deuce, but you, you know, that leaves nicely spread to make the points next time quickly. You, know, mm, you have a three true. point board next go most of the time and he's, you've got a quite nice timing now. Not great, but not terrible. It's like, okay. And timing. you can still make, yeah, and even though it's on the deuce, I can still make a pure board. 
off the back of this off yeah. the back of these slots. You're not burning anything. I just think to, like when I when I got this position, I, I think to myself, I still want to try and find a way to come forward because my timing's not great. But if I can keep timing, the two four back game is a good one. Mm. So I want to build my board and, and hit a shot later, and I can run off the, the men on the eighteen. The way it is, with that, if you don't make your play, you've got flexibility in game plans that you decide. You can either play twenty three eighteen later or and make the board, or you can run off the eighteen and rely on a two four back game. But I think you take optionality away when you when you do this. Yeah, that makes sense. You also just get run I also, over. I, I mean, like you know. Yeah. Again, you you don't play for money. You don't care about getting gammon. You know? <laughs> Your gammon's go up from twenty two to thirty five percent from your this play. Yeah, and you're basically left with. I it. was. You don't get to enjoy your eighteen point anchor much because you get blitz, so you end up with a deuce point game. Yeah, which is terrible. So I I'd, I'd wondered if like running off the twenty one. So, so there's a benefit, there's like a double-edged sword to having three three anchors, which is the obviously the contact is great and it makes it really difficult for him, but I'm also really short on ammunition or you know, builders, basically, to make the board. So I think part of that was also yeah. the thinking. But may, maybe there, if there was a role that allowed me to break the 18, you know, maybe I'd pick a, like grab a spare, use, use that and break that to generate spares. But losing, like you said, losing the 21 just... Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get blitz and stuck in a deuce point anchor game, which would be terrible. I think in a way you've got this. It's quite similar to that double six where you play them all down from the mid, and that you're scared of. You're right. I told you to play pure last time, not not burn deep. <laughs> like you know that was a big error in the first session when we looked at some Jacob yeah. plays that weren't recorded. But um, so it's good in a way that you're worried about. You know, burning or placing them too deep. Mm. Um, but there's nothing wrong with like one checker there or you know eventually you're going to make it as a point you know it's when you've got multiple checkers there or you know um, so sometimes those plays are natural yeah again this is Gammons Gammons yeah I see it because you just because yeah, my play wins, yeah, my games, play wins substantially more because of the additional contact. Of course contact. it does, yeah. yeah, of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> You've got more contact. <laughs> yeah. It's just the... You know what, actually, I'm not even sure I'd find this. I'll take the piss out of you, but... It's not, it's not that easy to find, because you are down and... You know, you do want the contact. It looks like you're giving up. It's funny enough, it doesn't mm. lose that. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't lose that many more games stepping up, does it? Even at DMP, when you step up, you're fifteen point six. It's an extra like one and a half percent, slight two percent games you're giving up by stepping up, but saving ten percent gammons, thirteen percent gam, fourteen percent gammons almost. Yeah, so same old thing. We've got to think about the old gammons occasionally. We'll do a few more, yeah, and then I'll probably uh Yeah. I'm gonna have a glass of wine. Uh, uh yeah. Fifteen eleven, six five. I mean I didn't yeah, I didn't like fifteen eleven, but six five just seems so mandatory. Yeah. And it's no, he's not. I mean, 15, 40, the double hits. Is that because he's got a blot in board? Yeah. And I've got a stronger board? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think That's so. quite tough. It is hard. Because, yeah. It is hard. If I was playing super fast, I could easily make your play. It's a really bad one, is it? You know. Yeah. 6-2. Yes, yeah, you know, the, the, the other thing is like, after the roll, you're, you're 12 pips up, right? So if he rolls a five, it's a very, very even game. 
Whereas when you <clears throat> when you uh, double hit, you, you straight away know you're a massive favourite, right? Well, presuming you're missed. Well, but I mean, equity-wise. So, like, you, you make the top play, you can see oh, yeah. your equity is close to half a point. Yeah? You're winning 60% games and 30% gammons. 0. 0.476 mm-hmm. with a Q. First of all, the fan's going to be double pass. That's it. Another yeah. thing, like we talked about, was thinking about where the cube is. So, you, you double hit, it's... Um, Nine games you win straight away, yeah? When he fans? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas your play, have you even got a cube if he rolls a normal number? Maybe. Mm. Maybe not when he's got the 18 point. Maybe not. So you're quite stripped. You haven't got anything. He's got the 18. The race is fairly, like, fairly even. He could be, he could blitz me one man back again. Yeah, probably not. And the other thing is, you know, he's got fives out. You know, some sixes make the five point. All the other numbers kind of attack you. But look, it's not playing fast. And I know when you played 100 games, I don't know how many you were playing a time. But it's very easy to autopilot sometimes. I do it. Yeah. Like, I could, I could make this play. Chunks, I could, honestly, I could find, yeah. I could make this play. Um, or is this cool? Is this cool? Wouldn't he just sees those things? Yeah. I'm not saying I, I probably wouldn't make the play, but I could, you know? Oh, this is very similar to the the other one. You've got to make the action yeah. play. Yeah, I missed the tempo. Yeah, stop him from doing stuff when you're down in the race and in a losing position. So that's that's quite a good one because I'd, I'd looked more at tempo plays as, you know, let's say he had a checker let's say one of his checkers from his six point was on the on his 11 for yeah. example then then the tempo would look immediately obvious to me yeah. because he's got so many numbers that build uh the nine or the, or the five but here he looks it, it's sort of like is it a tempo well, i think what you're kind of missing is that like is it a tempo four when, when you hit when his small numbers make the points the five or four point but a lot of his big numbers, like six, five, five, four, you know, double four, double five, will, will blitz you out and point on you deep, which is not very desirable either. Mm. You know, so like, I think you're worried when he's got the builder on the 11 or the nine, say, and you make the 10 mm-hmm. play. But often when he's stacked like that on the six, he's ready, ready to attack and stepping up. It's like he must have rolled a big double or he's outrolled you every roll this game. So it's similar like after he's rolled a double five, you don't your play uh you just you know, sit he he's he's up in the race and you're giving him sixes out and small numbers to attack and just doesn't really oh, do yeah. anything. So I guess this also gives you a much better chance of making the twenty point. You know, when, when and- and when you give him freedom like, like this, like the, he's going to attack you. Whereas this, when you take away half the roll, if you get hit even, you can yeah. re-anchor. Yeah, one's a duped a bit. So, but I think also, overall, like, Alec, when other... you look at this position and you say to yourself, I'm 20, 20 pips down in the race and, and I've got a stronger board and he's about to yeah, do something, what... everything's pointing to yeah. the... And also unloading that stack on the six. Yeah. Everything's no, everything. I was about to say that as as well. It's the same as the last one, right? Yeah, very similar. It's almost exactly the same. More checkers back, stronger board behind in the race. He's about to do something. It's all, yeah. It's quite clearly painted picture now. I, mean, I think the thing, the other thing is when you're behind in the race, it doesn't matter that much if you get hit, because, especially when he's got no board, because you can re-anchor and find other ways to win. Like whether you're down twenty or down forty, you're still down. You see, you see, in a way, it's better to be more down because you can make the anchors. When you're down 20, 30 pips, you may as well be down 50, 60. You're not going to win. You know, you're just such an underdog in the race. You, you find other ways. Right, we'll do three more. I've let's, find, let's find some interesting ones. Okay. Uh, but That's just a technical player. Duplication or something. 
was it? What do you mean? Well, wasn't it? Uh, you hit with a five, and now you got an ace to play, wasn't it? Yeah, but it says you don't hit with the five. You make the six. Oh, so oh hold okay, on. right. You just made this. You, I think you just missed the six prime, I guess. Yeah, I just missed the six prime. I see now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I saw hitting on the five. I just hit, and then I hit by default, and then looked for the base. But actually, I missed the six prime. Yeah, that's obvious. It's interesting with the six prime. You're even without hitting. You're winning forty-two percent gammons here. Because we said before, I can't, do you remember we yeah, said 15, 35 for three and you got more chance of yeah. pick, like he's going to crash now and you've got the gatekeeper yeah. or goalkeeper, whatever you call it. You win so many gammas anyway, you got the game locked up, you just let him collapse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Double two. Sorry, I've got to put the initial position up. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so what did I do? I made the rack and left a direct shot. So I was, okay, so like, what's going on in this position? Obviously, I hate having twenty you know, four on the 24 point, but there's nothing I can do about that. So... Okay, I'm not going to spend long on this because it's unusual. It's unusual, but I guess just the thinking is um, you've, got to, you've, got, you've got to do everything you can to buy time to get off the ace point. You've got four on the ace. You can't win the game with four men back on the ace, right? Even after yeah. This, uh, yeah. this play. You're just getting so out prime. So at least this play, it looks super ugly, but it just buys you time. If he fans with one or fans with two or comes in with just one, it buys you time to roll a one or a three and make some kind of other yeah. anchor, yeah? Um, you just can't out prime him. It's, Move on from back games because see if we can find something else. Oh, that this is interesting. Oh, one. Final. This, yeah, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Ah, okay. So. Oh, what did I do? Fifteen eleven. Okay, that seems that seems really weird. Fifteen eleven now. Um, it's not really weird. I mean, I mean, well. I understand why you made the play. I think, I think yeah, like, I, um, full freedom. Like, I, I'm out. I'm out from behind the prime. I don't want to leave any shots. I mean, this would be one that would be very easy to get wrong over the board live because you don't, you know, you don't, not everyone has the pip count access. Um, mm. But this is one where you really have, like, it's quite deceptive to the eye. And if you're playing quickly, but when you look at the pips and you're down uh, a pip and he's on roll, um, you just, like you said, you can't give him the full roll, right? So you just got to make the active play. And I it guess because the threes are duplicated, it's not many shots either back. You know, it's only five shots, five returns. Mm -hmm. On double five as well, six. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And he fans nine times. Yeah, it's just big for the race. Just yeah. Four three. Oh, this is quite interesting because oh, yeah. you, you 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 hate bet burning to the ace, and you're right in general. Yeah. Um. But what what do you think is happening in this position? So, I guess I'm losing the race. So I want outfield control, I guess, by leaving the 15 point there. When he's he has to run with oh no oh well, he has to run with the six, and when he runs with the six, I want to hit him with with the control I have in the outfield. Yeah, I mean, even that seems like a weak weak argument though, because or or too weak to justify burning to. Yeah, he's anyway. But is it about that? Is it about outfield control when you're, yeah, when you're winning the race? Yeah, 100%. He's winning okay. the race. You, you you know, when he rolls a six, you want to be back. And even when he rolls 6-5, you want to be hit because he's got the blotting board and only a three-point board. You, I mean, you just want to stay back, build the board, 
slow him down. And when you're playing from six to one, although you, you know, like it's burning, every burn is different. So like here, it's never going to do anything that checker on the six because he's got three on your four point. Mm. Like, okay, if he runs with two and he's forced to stay with one, by that stage you'll have other builders there. So often in these prime, these positions where you've got outside primes, it is right to burn to the ace or checkers back and you build the board slowly, trying to hold, trying to hold the prime for as long as you can. So... Oh, okay, trying to hold the yeah because, okay. because, because what the happen, outside primes tend what what happens is tend to be primes. if you have yeah. the outside prime, although you're wasting and burning in the race, you get to a situation now where, say for example, you keep the outside prime, and he rolls double five or four five, he's burning all the pips, and even though you've burnt in the mm. race slowly, you're going to catch him up. They're not ideal placement, but you. Every roll that goes past where he doesn't escape, you're usually picking up pips because he's got to burn complete waste everything. Yeah. Okay. So the idea. So when you have an outside, you want to hold it for as long as you can. Prime, so you often. I, I want to burn the spares yeah. you got on the eight, yeah, yeah. seven, and six, keeping the points. When this just when you're down in the race. Yeah, move down the race. Okay, and here you, you keep that. That, that. that makes a lot of sense. I think if you if you go to eight to one and look at the final position, I think I, I looked at that and saw it as you know, saying like moving the checkers around. I like, saw this as quite brittle as well. But now it's it is still brittle. It is still fragile, but it preserves the prime. I don't think it's fragile at all. I don't think it's fragile at all because. First of all, it looks pretty oh, to really? me, and it's like a point you want to make so that if he runs, you've got more of a threat with the board. But it's not brittle because you can break the 11. If, if the 11 was on the 10, yes, I see that. But here, the 11, 7 away, right? So you're just going to play off the 11. Yeah. It's oh, very, yeah. very flexible. You play off the 15, okay. yeah. you play off the 11. Right, we'll look at one. Uh, okay, I guess. One more? Yeah, uh, let's look at this one. Last roll position. Uh, oh, did I just miss the hit? Yeah, so you can't can't let him escape, right? This yeah, this is clear. Can't let him escape. Yeah, there's no threat because yeah, yeah, yeah. you can come in on a, on a four point board. Yeah. All right, what about this one? So I ran 24 to 16, thinking that, you know, I'll be, I'm up in the race at that point, And if I miss, then I'm, I'm out. Um, but I mean, how do I then bring it home? So let's say I ran, I ran 24 to 16 and then I am missed. Like I've got no, nothing in my outfield to help me bring this game home. Like it's very difficult for me to just come back, and I suppose the better way, of, <laughs> the better way of looking at it is six to three. I've got a three-point board. Um, I don't want him anchoring there. It's a, it's uh, I can be more aggressive because I've got a stronger board, and I buy and I buy a tempo to stop him from making the, the three or the eighteen. Yeah, would be my lo my logic there. Yeah, I mean the thing is. First of all, when you hit, what's the cube action if he fans? Uh, okay, was it clear it would be a double because yeah. I've got the, the threat is huge. Would it okay, be? maybe it's, well, a, it's maybe a it's a, maybe yeah. it's a take, but maybe it's a take. But it's not comfortable for him. You know, like you you, yeah. you, you achieve very high equity when he fans straight away. And what, what's the downside? Like, the race is even at the moment, basically. Because, you you know, you're, mm. you're going to be seven up after the roll, but he's on roll. And he's... If you just come out, you're leaving... I know we said not to count shots, but four is three, one, double two is 14, six, three is 15. Uh, so you're giving him 15 
hits plus all five mm-hmm. Zanka, six one. You, you, it's, I think it's just this freedom thing, you know, like you missed those tempo hits. It's the same here, but it's a tempo hit, but the upside's just enormous. And it feels like the downside's quite minimal because if you get hit, okay, you've given up your race advantage, but you've got the stronger board and he's got to bring yeah. he's got to bring three blots around and he's only got a two point board and you're, you're gonna have lots of chances to hit him with a strong with the rack or whatever it is. Do you think actually you're right if he dances? So I can see, and also I'm, I'm hitting off a point, you know, the next point that I want. Yeah. It's a pure point. It's good. Yeah, I can see that. Do you think it's a pass after? Uh, that's a that, if, he, if he dances, that position looks quite scary. Oh, let's have a look. You're 10 pips up. Yeah, it could be. You've only got... I mean, you've got the five point, though. and I've only got a three point board. I don't know. It seems kind of close. Mm. Um, it seems... Yeah, close. okay. This one, this one makes sense. But whether Is it's it, a pass or a take, if it's close, it doesn't matter. Like, your equity is going to be high. So <coughs> is this about... Is there a component of this that's about not wanting him to anchor on the three, or is it more just, uh, Both. Is, that a, or is that a kind of minor thing? No, it's not minor at all. Just this play just doesn't do very much to win the game. It's like if he rolls a one, a four, or a five, he makes a very strong anchor and he's in the game forever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just like this play seems so big, and the downside doesn't seem that much yeah. to me. You know, you get hit back, you might re- return hit or come in an anchor. It's just the risk reward. Also, you've cubed gammons. Like the top play wins twenty two percent gammons compared to fourteen. Loses so it wins nine percent more gammons and sorry. 8% more gammons and loses 3% more. So it's, it's just a big upside in gammons. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just no, that's a good one. reviewing the session, uh, so I think you've got to be wary of um, when to make these tempo plays. Yeah. So the, the situations to be wary of are when not just when he's got that checker on the 11, but when he's stacked, you know, on the six or five, like after a big double. Yeah, that's a good one. Waiting to unleash. And also, not just tempo plays, but uh, just think a bit more about risk reward with big plays. Feels like you're not making, you're not finding the big plays. You know, where you can get the knockout punch with the upside yeah. straight away like this one. And also, and also, I suppose the gammons, the, looking at the number of gammons that I lose seems to be yeah. something that I ignore quite a lot. Yeah. I think also just, just very quickly, you know, you're very good at finding the best DMP player a lot of the time. You're right. So just factor into your model a tiny bit of uh, like you did with the cube, like we discussed with the cube. Just like think, adjustment. Just adjust a little, just in the back of your mind, think how many gammons do I win and lose net? You know, the, the difference. Mm. If the pickup and loss is the same, yeah. it cancels each other out. So here, although you win a lot more gammons, um, you do lose a few, a few more as well. So you've got to make a, a bit of adjustment both ways. But the, yeah. I think most people, myself included, uh, often when I'm making a play, I think about what's going to win the most games and what's going to win the most gammons. Yeah. But I don't always think about how many gammons I lose with a play. Yeah. I would when it's running off yeah. an anchor like that earlier one. But often in the interplay games, I may miss um, miss something because I, I, I don't, especially with the cube, I don't take into account how many gammons I lose. Yeah, so just got to think about it a bit more, that's all. You probably do it a bit more yeah. naturally 
uh, in matches because of the match scores. So I think I do, yeah. Certain match scores you're, you know, don't care about getting gammon and others you really do. So you probably, yeah. it's inbuilt to think about it in a match, but for money, you're not used to it. So maybe it's unfair of me yeah. to have asked you to play money games when you're not used to it. Um, no, it's good though, because it just makes the, yeah, it makes identifying the errors simpler, right? Less to factor in. I think it's good with your game that a lot of your errors are quite consistent, if that makes sense. If they were, yeah, and I've been, if they were coming in like loads of different departments of the game, it'd be quite a problem, you know. Like, but yeah. it seems like you're only making cube and checker players in very similar spots. So if you can change some of it's just play like back game and timing and where to hit off the edge of the prime, mm-hmm. that will come with playing more, like another year, two years, but. The, um, the technical stuff, like the tempo plays and, and uh, knowing when to burn checkers and when not to, that you can work on, it will come. You know, the, yeah. well, I've, that, that's what I've been trying to um, categorize as we've been going through these mistakes, trying to create a folder structure, a blunder library that's based on the common mistakes that I'm making. Um, so I can hopefully pinpoint exactly that, those those areas of weakness as opposed mm. to just sort of playing over and over arbitrarily, like actually playing the weaker the weak um the elements that I'm weakest at. Yeah. It's funny, I was gonna say you're a lot more methodical than I am because I don't think when I was learning the game I I studied as much as, much as you, but I just saw I found this file. Uh it's pretty cool actually. Look at this. I don't know if you can see, but oh, no, I'll put it on the camera. I found this file when I was at university. I started playing backgammon. And they're, yeah. they're jellyfish on a snowy printout. Cause really? Yeah, like back, I used to print them out and have a look. I don't, so I guess I did do it a little bit. But this yeah. one, um, Lucky Jim Black versus Sick Dice White three-point match on Games Grid from July 2000. Uh, would I have made the same mistake? Probably. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. It's often, I often wonder, like, you know, when you, when you look through the errors and all that, whether you'd still make the mistake. But I found this file. Yeah. Like, I hadn't seen it in years, but it's going back 22 years. Yeah, I'm getting an old, uh, becoming an old man. Yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, I think before the days of mobiles in a shuet, uh, yeah. they had these, like, cards. They looked like business cards, and you marked crosses and noughts on the board. To I've take, heard about these, yeah. Instead of yeah. like uh, snapping a position. As I, I don't <laughs> like to, to take photos of positions when I'm playing because um, I, I hate the dynamic of the game where, where you slow the game down to take pictures and, mm. you know, like, I still like gambling and so on. It just ruins the game for me when people do that every other move. And I figure yeah. you could play a million games of practice uh, for learning purposes, when you're competing, you, why do you need to record it? You know, like yeah, maybe it's different. A big tournament, you want to know how you play or something. You know, some people be mad or whatever these people do. But in general, like I like to do my study now, like playing Galaxy or playing you or so you don't have to. Yeah, and then yeah. when I'm playing, I don't think about it. I just play. You can play. Yeah, I mean it's just another position. I can I can find you a million interesting positions doesn't have to be from a live match you know um, yeah but i that, take i am um, when i play in live tournaments which just because of covid has been very few but um i i feel that sense of like interrupting the flow of the game by taking pictures um i still do it occasionally i would say probably in a whole evening tournament i'll take maximum one or two pictures yeah like on the on the positions that are really like like maybe a, a recue, but an awkward match score. I'm like, this is one that I really want to understand later. But I know what you mean. It kind of it kind yeah. of detracts from the flow of the game. Out of interest, how good's your memory for positions? Uh, I don't, as in, like, how much could I recall a position from a from a tournament that I had? Yeah, you know, like um, say, say for example, we we have a um, I don't know. Say that double six where you cleared the midpoint. Yeah. If I if I asked you to recreate it now, how close do you think you get? 
I could get close ish, but like nowhere near. I wouldn't I wouldn't put faith in my memory for that because I feel like I could get the general gist of it down. I could organize the checker so it roughly reflects that. But that it feels like roughly doesn't cut it in backgammon because everything's so dependent on you know, every checker's placement counts. So I tend to not try and recreate positions or think about them from memory because I'm more worried that I'll misremember them. But just as a, as a, I mean, the, the interesting thing about doing them from memory, and I, there's probably a very close to 100% correlation between the strength of players and how how they mm. recall positions. Um, I remember actually the first tournament, international tournament I played was the Nordic Open in about 99 or something. And um, the guy, he's, I don't think he's playing anymore, but this guy called PDS Thompson... Uh, who won the world championship when he was very young, got to the final the next year. He played a 25-point match. And he recalled mm -hmm. the whole match. Straight after. He came out the tournament and he put the board oh, there. Call it from memory. He played through yeah, the match, wow. yeah. He played through the match. And in a way, wow. that's easier in some respects than recalling an individual position. But say, for example, you had to recreate a position. Yeah. Like this one. Say this one. Mm -hmm. Say we look at this. How would you? How would you try and do it? I would. I would basically. Yeah, I'd remember things like. Um, you know, I uh, I have the rack, or I have a three point board to a two point board. Um, I. I would. I would probably recall. Um, I would probably end up recalling my position, the placement of my checkers better than the placement of their checkers like it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a sort of global snapshot that would live in my head it would be okay i had the rack and one man back you know i was and i had no, nothing in my um outer board well, it's interesting example. that you're that saying be, that because probably everyone does the same but why 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 do you know your position better than your opponents well exactly yeah you should you need to you should be looking at the placement of every every checker regardless of whether they're yours look at the whole board yeah I point. guess that that's a good thing. Like when you're playing the game, you sounds like you need to focus more on what, what your opponent's board is doing. Yeah. Or like his freedom of play, yeah. not just your own. But the way I would remember it is I'd start the same way as you, with um, uh, where the main features like the rack or one man back versus two men back or whatever. And then I'd have ultimately, if I was trying to recreate it exactly. Like, say I had a bet on a position and I had to recreate it and I hadn't got a photo. I'd know the pip count. So that right, okay. I could always think the checkers until the pip count's correct. So if I know I'm 61, mm. so one pip, uh, uh, before I play, I'm one pip behind. There's only so, so many combinations where it's going to end up with one pip behind, right? When yeah. you're recreating it. So that's the, the arbiter. And then also, I'd look at how a few roles play. Because once you think about how a few specific roles play, it's quite easy to, to pick it back up. So, you know, in this spot, you were deciding whether to hit him off the edge of the prime. So you know you've got a spare on the six and he's on, on the edge of your prime here. Because that was your decision. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the other play, if you just ran out all the way, um, to the 15 you're giving him sorry to the, the 16 you're giving him all fours and we counted 6-3 as well right yeah so you yeah. know if you know the rolls 5-3 and you're trying to recreate it you know the rough assets of the li liabilities of the position then you've got the pip count and then when you look at how specific rolls play you'll be able to put the checkers in the right place so eventually like you won't even need a camera if you play enough, because you'll you'll be you'll understand so much more about the position from your analysis, even within a second, or maybe not a second, but say five seconds of looking at it. Like you'll look at this position, you'll say, okay, well, I'm one pit behind. I can, I've got a three point board. He's got a two point board. I can blitz him, and he fans nine times, and I and I'm basically gin. Maybe he's got a tape, but it's close. Or I can come out. And give him direct fours plus some flies, 
Um, just that information would be enough to, to get 13 of the checkers right. Because mm. you're, you're seeing what's going on in the position. You're know, looking at the race, you're looking at the strength of the boards, you're looking at how individual numbers play for both you and him. So it will come. It will yeah. come. Right. Uh, we'll speak in a couple of weeks or so. Yeah. Okay, great. Mate. That's Cheers. great. Thanks, James. Thanks. Bye. Appreciate it. Ciao. Good night, sir.